Hello, everyone. I'm glad y'all are able to join us tonight. Uh, we've had a, a good hard week of work and doing a lot of stuff and uh, want to have us a, a great show tonight, bring out some good information. Um, and um, But as always, uh, if you have any comments as far as uh, who you may think that this is, uh, do not use names or initials. Um, provide that information to law enforcement. Doesn't do any good for chat. We don't want to influence anyone that might uh, have a person of interest. Uh, and uh, so we just always want to leave the door open for that. Um, in chat, be respectful of each other. Respect the mods. They're just trying to help um, Mrs. Steve and I uh, uh, to have a channel that we can uh, do what we want it to have and have the impact that we want it to have. But uh, with that being said, uh, we'll get into it. As always, a little introduction. Um, uh, I, this is Mrs. Steve and I'm Steve. I'm a retired law enforcement uh, officer, 20 years of service. Um, started off uh, working in the jail, uh, worked through the road uh, up to uh, into investigations. During that time period, over those 20 years, I worked and had training in everything from SWAT to uh, becoming the state certified crime scene tech um, and processed everything, and investigated everything from uh, burglaries to uh, uh, homicides. Um, also, uh, uh, I retired and after I retired, I decided and found uh, the true crime uh, part of the uh, Internet and decided to become an ambassador for law enforcement and work to have a with the uh, web sleuth world and the true crime world and try to uh, bridge a gap there so that everybody could work together and understand some of the things of how law enforcement thinks and works. And so that everyone can have a better impact on some of these cases for the families and the victims. And uh, so something occurred to me um, and it's been occurring to me since the, uh, the murder sheets first came out with the, uh, uh, the transcripts and, um, and then came out, really with the, uh, the affidavit for the search warrant for uh, Ron Logan. Um, when that occurred, um, I realized uh, because they made reference in there, you know, it was redacted and everything, but there was references made in there that uh, eventually was released about um, an edge uh, um, type of weapon. And so um, I was thinking that, well, if they, of course, they if they know the uh, manner of death, um, and what caused death and what uh, types of uh, weapons may have been used, that there's certain things and certain characteristics of certain weapons that um, are identifiers, regardless if it's a knife or any type of uh, heavy uh, metal, uh, you know, from a tire iron to a screwdriver, they all leave tool marks. And they even leave tool marks on the victims. Um, and also in the wood and into uh, just about anything that they come in contact with, there'll be a tool mark there that sometimes you can identify and sometimes you can't. And so um, I was thinking along those lines. And then when this river search came along, I said, okay, so if they're looking for a certain instrument or a certain tool, um, what would lead them there and give a reinforcement to that was so critical to create such a response. And I also realized then that if someone that was a part of this crime knew of what that instrument was and could describe that instrument prior to even the search going on and, and had told law enforcement, hey, and they called in that one tip and they said such and such item was used and they were able to give some critical information about what that uh, tool looked like or that knife looked like or whatever type of instrument it was and they could describe it or draw it out that would be supporting evidence regard with regardless if you had a polygraph or otherwise because if someone knows exactly what type of a weapon was used and can describe it and it has some uh, characteristics about it either that was found at the scene um, or uh, made marks and anything from clothing, victims, um, being laid down on the ground um, to there's so many different ways that you can find evidence that may identify a tool or create a, a, a image of a, a weapon used. And that's what we're going to be covering tonight and looking at some of those things so that you can see and 
and also from the crime scene perspective of it that we're looking at uh, they're doing a river search here but all of this started here at this crime scene as you can see it's trees and leaves so csi would respond to this location and go in there and they have a uh, it's absolutely you know unbelievable how difficult it is sometimes especially in outdoor scenes uh, of trying to find evidence you know um, is it blood evidence uh, uh, you know there's so many different types of evidence out there from footprints shoe prints uh, uh, that are hard to find in some surfaces you got a creek there that has mud at some of those at, at that part and looking at the creek and in certain areas it might be quite easy to identify but once you get up there into that hard packed earth and you get into the leaves and you're working in these trees and you have these branches and everything csi has a hard job trying to identify and um, and search for certain types of uh, evidence you know uh, dna and all the other stuff but so once i determined that i was trying to look for and show uh, everyone that's uh, in my um, community of uh, some of the things that they may face that's how come i ordered the synthetic blood and everything so that i could create some scenes and that's what i've been doing this week um uh, for the last few days um i've decided that I would go out into the woods back behind me um, on my property and find a location that's very similar to what um, uh, is the Delphi crime scene. Um, heavily uh, leafy, uh, dead leaves on the ground. Um, you know, uh, of course, you have all your foliage, it's limited amount of foliage um, and low to the ground. And so, although it's not the same type of year, it's not the same environment as far as humidity and uh, uh, temperature and everything but it has some similar characteristics to it you know and so there would be some similar regardless of the crime scene regardless of what state it happened at what time of year working outdoor scene is working outdoor scene um, and you all of them have variables i'm not saying i'm that i have recreated that exact scene i'm telling you that i went out and created to show people what you might expect um, or at CSI would expect to go and what they would be looking for and how they would look for it and how difficult it is. And uh, this here is the first part. We got uh, several parts to this, but this is the first part. Um, and I learned a lot uh, doing this one uh, um, because uh, some of this stuff, I'd never worked with synthetic blood before. Didn't know what the uh, response would be. Um, when I folded it out and um, cast it out and went, you know, used the uh, knife to create um, uh, cast off um, imprints, did blood, uh, synthetic blood trails, um, did, um, you'll see all the things I did uh, in this series as we continue forward. But it was very interesting. And so once I found my location, I wanted to uh, create this uh, situation so I could show and share with you what CSI faces. I went out and marked off the area, marked off trees, and I labeled certain areas where I was going to be able to create um, certain blood patterns and blood spatter. Um, if you go online, you most certainly go in there and look up blood spatter, and they'll tell you all the different types of blood spatter and cast off and transfers and um, passive blood, and, 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 and there's so much into it and so much about it that uh, uh, in the CSI world that we do, and, um, and you're doing it in an environment that most certainly can camouflage it and it's hard to do. Um, but I went ahead and labeled everything off so that when I went in and started doing my uh, uh, crime scene, I went in in a rush and tried to do everything as fast as possible. For the fact that is something that to mimic what would be the time restraints of such as Briggs guy uh, uh, during his attack so that I would have something to compare and limit and get everything out there real quick and throw it out there uh, with that synthetic and never working with synthetic. Like I said, I, I learned a lot of things uh, and I'm very uh, uh, satisfied uh, with uh, uh, the synthetic blood. I have to give them a kudos for what they've created uh, so that we don't have that, uh, those pathogens and the harm, although it's still something that it says use extreme caution with, um, and so I did, um, and um, 
because most certainly we it's not worth uh, uh, injuring yourself or anyone else. So if any of you out there ever try to recreate something, go by whatever the because uh, I believe almost anyone can get all this stuff, but be extremely cautious with it. Don't and you know really not even need to try it home. Just send uh, whatever suggestions you have to me, and I'll do it. Ain't no big deal. But anyway, um, after I set up the scene, this is me in my Yeti suit. Um, and, um, so, um, I, I dressed out totally in this, entered into the woods and, uh, I, while I was out there, I was wondering, uh, uh, what would someone think if they saw me, uh, in the wood line like this? Um, I survived the earlier encounter when I was in the house and I walked through the, uh, down the hallway and Mrs. Steve's in the office and, um, I wasn't ready for that. She wasn't quite ready for that, but I survived that first encounter. And then, uh, I said, well, I'm gonna go to the wood line. And she said, be careful. And uh, so I was, and uh, but I, I went in um, and created as much different things as I thought that uh, to show and demonstrate to you what um, the CSI would be looking for and, and how, you know, it, at times it's pretty easy to identify. Um, I did go in after dark and luminol. And whenever I do that part of the series, you're going to be amazed. And, you know, it's absolutely unreal that in daytime, you can't really see the blood that much, uh, the synthetic blood. But at night, it lit up like a Christmas tree. It looked like an airport out there. I didn't know I had uh, created such uh, blood spatter um, during the experiments that I was doing because I did a lot of different um, experiments uh, trying to simulate everything from cast off of a weapon to uh, certain injuries such as arterial spurts if, if certain things happen to a victim that um, you'll have that pressurized blood from a source and uh, it creates certain types of uh, patterns that are identifiable. And so as I did that, um, that was the whole reason to so that I could go in there and look at this leafy earth uh, or leafy uh, coverage of the ground so that I could identify certain characteristics and, and look for the uh, certain trails and identifiers of a uh, uh, blood better. But um, another thing I did was, is I went over to a, I found a, um, a, a log that had the bark off of it. And with my trusty knife here, I did some quick slashes on this branch. And from this, of course, you can see what the tool marks of a edge uh, weapon will do to the wood. And um, because that might be something that you would see during some type of, a, a, of attack or um, even um, if a weapon is dropped or thrown or uh, it, you know, whatever encounter is going on that's sometimes in these uh, violent encounters, other things other than just the uh, uh, victim or the offender. Offenders often, often hurt themselves with their, that if they create and do certain things with a, a knife and that encounter is involving a knife, that they'll uh, absolutely more often than not, cut themselves also, which is a great thing for the uh, CSI world because there's certain characteristics that we'll be talking about that occur that uh, CSI can look for. If we have a blood source, it's hard to identify a blood source when you're right there next to a victim. Um, but when you have a continuous supplied blood source, it's just like taking a paintbrush and you loading up a paintbrush and you pull it out of the bucket and if you walk straight away from the bucket as far as you wanted to just holding that paintbrush the drops stop at a certain point whereas if you had a continuous supply of paint or in this situation of subtype of blood such as yourself being injured that supply will not stop it will go a vast uh, greater distance than what would normally be the, uh, just a few drops of just, you know, 10 or 15 feet. So if you find a, uh, the consistent blood source away from the crime scene, that would not be some type of runoff because it, like I said, it's just like the viscosity of, of, of the body fluids is that they have gravity and weight and everything has to work together and it creates the same drops consistently, the same size. Um, and so what we got going on? Stefa, thank you. I uh, appreciate your support. and appreciate the contribution. That means a lot to us donation, and uh, we'll put it to good use. I promise you. 
The uh, but um, um, as like I said, when you use knives and things, it's almost certainly uh, a lot of times you injure yourself. So um, um, I created this and um, also did it with a uh, the uh, synthetic blood on the knife blade, so that when we light it up at night. Uh, when we get to that part of it, you'll see it, uh, of what that caused. But uh, just did a little bit uh, closer uh, to a mark from one of the uh, slashes across the board, uh, running almost horizontal um, right above the uh, yellow mark there. You can see that little slash into the wood that I used this knife with. All right. Then I created this passive stain, which... And you wouldn't think when you're just looking at this that there's really that much there. And it's not. It's hard to see. And uh, and that's part of the reason I did this is to, to show people that, yes, you may have that a blood uh, uh, stain there where a victim is. You'll easily identify it. And but that's not really what, you know, we to find a mixture of DNA from two victims or one victim and one perpetrator offender mixed is extremely difficult to ever uh, distinguish. But looking for these other stains that are away from the crime scene is what is so critical in the CSI world, because we want to see that stain or those blood trails away from the crime scene uh, that's out there on the outer perimeters of it that aren't caused from the victim. They're not from the victim. We want it to be from that offender then we can identify it. We have a certain degree of confidence that if we have certain blood flow patterns away from the crime scene, they can only be there because of uh, mostly that the offender has harmed himself. And um, a little bit easier that you can see is, is that I marked the original location on the tree where I started um, uh, dispensing um, the synthetic uh, blood. And then just let gravity do its thing. You know, you can see that little faint uh, uh, line coming down the face of that tree. And that's just gravity fed. It just wherever gravity took it, almost took it, you know, straight to the ground, just following whatever uh, the uh, bark flow allowed it to do because it has that viscosity, it has that surface tension, and it just run and, and down this length of the tree. And so I did that so that, and then when I lit this up at night, it's absolutely, you'll see that there's, it, it's night and day from what you see here. Well, it might be difficult, but CSI, such as if they went in there on Delphi and they lit that thing and they put it in total darkness because you have, uh, Luminol works with uh, the, uh, uh, for the uh, interaction with blood extremely well in low light, almost total darkness. And it uh, lights up the world. Like I said, it looks like an airport whenever you hit it. And, um, but uh, that, like I said, that'll be another show and we'll be getting into that. But uh, most certainly, I'm also running a test on that for the fact that I did that, uh, what, two or three days ago? Uh, and um, so I did it two or three days ago. And so I'm going to do a long term study of this crime scene that's setting up in the woods to see how this, because I've never done that before. I mean, we always, when we were learning how to uh, process crime scenes prior to, we would be at these schools for a limited amount of time, either there 40 hours or 80 hours. But now I have the ability and I have synthetic blood, so I don't have to worry about certain uh, uh, pathogens and causing harm, that I was able to create a crime scene that's up in the woods and I can leave it there because I'm going to go back every week, uh, light it up and see what the effects of, and how long, because in a controlled environment, um, blood pattern uh, uh can be lit up by luminol and identified for, you know, virtually forever. I mean, you know, not forever, but, you know, that some of the crime scenes are years and years and years later, they're able to go in luminol and find uh, uh, blood that has been attempted to be cleaned up and everything. But I've never uh, experienced or and never um, seen what it would do. I, the body farm probably has these tests and probably has information on some of this, but, I just don't have the personal experience from the body farm. So um, I, I created me a little crime scene up there and, and I'll be able to go that and be able to report to y'all and we'll be able to show that as we go. Uh, it's going to be an interesting study that I'll have back there behind my house. But um, 
when you when I stood back and I had all the markers and placards out there showing what type of stains it was and on the ground, I went in and started trying to search because I went in and this is um, two days after I went in and created a crime scene. I came back the next day and looked and saw and then I gave it, you know, I started collecting some stuff, started marking some stuff, looking at some stuff and trying to find those uh, blood stain patterns and trying to find that uh, synthetic blood trail. And, um, and, and I had luminoled it the day before or the night before, and there was blood everywhere. And I said, absolutely unreal. But then I went back in daytime and looked at those same areas, and it was almost it, very, very limited on what type of, of stains you could see and identify. Uh, and um, so upon close inspection, I was able to find some certain uh, uh, blood stains on some leaves, as you can see here, that these leaves are all different colors. They're extremely hard, but you can see where those stains from this uh, synthetic um, blood I used is marking on these leaves. I collected those leaves. I have them here. Um, I went out and took some better photographs of it with a, to scale with a with a nickel so that y'all can see about what size these droplets were um, and uh, create this thing. And um, but as you can see, it's not that what you see in the movies like it's almost you know, or when you see some of these crime dramas that what they show you and, and, and it's easy to do. I knew where the blood stains were. I had these black and it was hard for me to locate them. Um, but in certain areas, I cannot see any of them. It's so um, uh, hard to identify some of this uh, blood as it or the, the synthetic. And like I said, I was pretty pleased with some of the indicators of, and it's working like what real blood does. So, but it was still hard to identify some of it. Not so much on these leaves I collected, but overall, I could probably only see one hundredth or one thousandth of what you will see when we luminate. It's totally different, and uh, I'll have some great documentation both daytime and then nighttime, and you'll be able to see the differences. All right. But um, um, I brought the leaves home, set them on a little cut log, and um, I put a nickel in there for scale so that y'all can see about what size these little droplets are. And they're not, and that's what I'm saying is you're looking at things that are, that are some of them are absolutely, uh, you know, one tenth the size of a, a dime. So I'm extremely small. And there's a lot of, depends what type of uh, uh, force and uh, is used. If it's some type of impact of um, uh, stain, um, those droplets get extremely small. They get the size of pinheads, and um, which, uh, like I said, with the luminol, you'll see it. I mean, it's, there's millions of them. But as far as the big stains, it's harder to identify. You would think it'd be easy, but it's not. It's an extremely uphill battle. But um, also, I did um, a couple of um, uh, stain prints with a. Uh, from a fingerprint because there was mentioning about partials. These partial fingerprints can be on any type of surface from a phone to skin, to clothing, to uh, just anything you can imagine. Um, and um, it, even to a, a certain type of surface of a leaf, um, you might be able to get a partial from. Don't know what they did there in Delphi uh, or how, uh, what they were looking at for a partial, but I wanted to do that. And um, also during that, uh, I laid uh, my knife tip down so that you can see what a partial print. And then this is just the tip of this knife that I laid down on the card beside it that was stained from earlier. And, uh, and it uh, still gave a significance so that you would have identifying what the point of some type of edge weapon might look like. Then... I most certainly I wanted to go in there that if they're looking for a knife in the uh, 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 Wabash uh, River there in Peru, and if that's what they're looking for, and um, what type of char characteristics would a knife have that might be supported that they don't know what is in there, they don't know, uh, but they've been told it's there, what could someone tell them? What's that? Yep, wrong one. 
Oh, okay. Sure. Charlie. Charlie. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the, uh, uh, the donation. Like I said, we, we appreciate all the support and we'll put it to good use. But, uh, and so um, I took this knife because people were uh, asking me and uh, sent me some emails asking about, well, a knife, w what would be significant about it? And so I took one of the knives that I had used for the testing from last week and um, to show and demonstrate to you that there could be some supporting evidence from a co-offender that would say, this is what was there. This is what was used. And that would be supporting enough and enough information that may cause what's going on in Peru. And uh, so I took that knife, which is this knife here. And um, it has the uh, spur on it here, as you can see, and which is uh, something that uh, I wanted to demonstrate. And I took that knife, I inked it up, and I pressed it on index cards, just little index cards and um, different parts of that knife. I took the knife blade. I took the knife handle with the wood grain. Um, I took the tip. I took the uh, pommel uh, section of the knife here in case uh, uh, it can be, you know, it, it most certainly can also cause injuries and um, uh, certain identifiers. And then the most uh, significant thing was the knife guard hilt, which is, as you can see here, it almost looks like a trigger um, and um, it has that little uh, very clearly defined um, uh, mark of what it is there on the side. But not only with that, but this knife, um, you have the length of blade, you have the thickness of blade of, um, and the, or the width, or the width of it, and which is identifier in certain injuries. But we also have this down here at the tip of this little spur right here is another identifying mark that if it came into contact with certain surfaces, either if this weapon was already stained with some person, uh, you know, by some person that had been injured with the blood, that they would be transfer marks. And transfer marks such as either with a knife blade on the side or the handle or the tip or the pommel or the guard hilt down here, if it left a contributing mark, and such as um, I created this little, it's hard to see this little um, um, index card, but there was two parts of this that when you put it in and you create that surface, this knife where the handle comes right here makes a mark that would be identifiable, but also where that spur comes in down here at the bottom it also where this spur right here comes into this card uh, this cardboard on here it left a mark and through those marks is how you would be able to, or something such as this that if the offender had set that knife down or had contact with some type of surface he might leave a very clear indicator of what type of knife it was is that the case in uh, Delphi? I have no idea. But it is something that we in CSI world would be looking for. We'd be looking for those blood trails. We'd be looking for that uh, cast off. We'd be looking for, and there's some other things that we're going to be looking into in the next show or two that is um, um, from a different perspective. But for tonight, I wanted to make sure that we covered all this so that y'all would have an idea of uh, what some of the th things and how hard it is. But what the focus of CSI is of going into these scenes is that we're looking for that blood. We're looking for that standout um, sustained blood away from the scene and within too, because there's certain uh, certain factors that we have to look at. But uh, there's nothing I can cover in just 30 minutes and make everybody CSI uh, capable. Um, and uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of hard work and a lot of training goes into some of this stuff so that people can understand and go out and do a good job to the best of their abilities. But anyway, um, before we uh, um, get into the uh, questions and everything, if you have any information about this case, most certainly uh, contact the tip line, give them the information if you have a suspect and bring it into this. Uh, if you have any information about any type of weapon that you've recovered from any type of uh, magnet fishing anywhere in the area, 
most certainly let law enforcement know that you found a certain instrument or a weapon or a knife or a gun. So just in case there's anything out there that might help this case, call in those tips, let law enforcement know. And with that being said, we'll get into it. Okay, you gotta give me just a second. All right. But um, right. anyway, I hope y'all found this informative. Okay, you got several questions. All right, let's see here. We gotta go all the way back to 756. All right. All right. Um, and Danielle, what did they find that they needed the helicopter to come pick up? I saw where that was reported. Um, I think it was on uh, uh, It's Crime and Shame. Um, they have they have a contact with Famously Unfamous or something that he's there every day. He lives in the area and he's been filming. And um, it's very interesting that uh, and they said a helicopter uh, has been sighted there flying. I don't know if it's um, I don't know what type if it is ISP or it's just a helicopter from a news agency. Don't know. But uh, hopefully they it was for a great purpose. <laughs> All right. And Susan Purdy, do you believe that allegedly a police called in on the radio that an unidentified man told him the girls were found in the creek before they were actually found has any significance to the case? I had heard that. And I've, uh, I, I think there's some uh, radio traffic out there about, someone saying something, but all of that being on the timelines and official times of when people making uh, the documentation and the radio logs most certainly would be able to the 911 call center, all the modern technology of how that would be memorialized through the uh, data banks and everything. They'll have all that information. They know the exact timeline. Um, some people may have heard something and may have got it, the timeline out of uh, character. I don't know, but uh, law enforcement will have that and that will come out. At, you know, um, I don't know if they've released that for uh, Freedom Information Act. Uh, if anybody's asked for that, uh, all those records and everything. I hadn't seen them published, but I'm sure they're out there. And Molly, very interesting at Steve. I've seen a lot of stuff about blood spatter analysis in enclosed spaces, rooms, et cetera, but never seen an experiment outdoors. Cool. And um, we had done some in training, but uh, like I said, that um, we're limited to, because there's so much to classroom um, and, and things to do. And, and back then we had to use real blood. Um, nowadays, like I said, I, I'm sure they still do. Uh, but I, like I said, I was real pleased with that, and I wanted to do that, and I'm interested in what the uh, future uh, experiments and controls as I go forward on seeing what the uh, how long the luminol um, uh, effects uh, occur in an outdoor environment. And double rainbows, um, all that foliage looks challenging indeed. It is, it is, uh, and I have a red-green deficiency. Um, and so it's extremely difficult on me. Uh, once I discovered I had a red green deficiency, everybody else on my team was tested to make sure that there weren't more than just me. Uh, and certain things were uh, changed to make sure that um, I uh, didn't create um, or create an issue, whereas uh, some blood could ever be damaged by me not or by missing it. And uh, but uh, that was just a matter of I had the skill sets to do and control and dictate and be in command of the crime scenes and understood certain things. But I can see the blood once it pointed out to me, but just casually looking over there in the uh, area. No, um, red and green just mingles to me. Don't ask us about deer hunting. Yes. Yeah, she has to. Yeah. She's, she's my tracker. <laughs> And Molly, at Steve, do CSI still use the strings to measure a gunshot angle or similar? Hope that makes sense. Oh, yes. They have lasers and things, of course, they use also that just, you know, and then, of course, you can use uh, what type of aerosols that will show up and um, where well, you can see the, the uh, through the void of space between contact point of where the bullet is fired to where it has its first uh, um, uh, allowance trajectory. Uh, where it may penetrate a wall or otherwise. But yeah, you can pull strings, you know, all that stuff. And still, uh, that will always work. 
sometimes your laser batteries are dead. Worst things in the world can happen, will happen to our crime scene. Guarantee you. everything, lights will quit. Uh, uh, batteries run dead. Um, get hungry. Get hungry. Measuring tapes break. Um, everything in the world that can happen will happen at it. It's just chaos. And they liked your Yeti suit. You like my Yeti suit? And double rainbows. Was it super hot to be covered up like that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but uh, like I said, I, uh, I didn't know and I don't know what's all in that uh, uh, bottle, um, but it said to be very cautious with it. So I said, well, I might as well do to show y'all uh, what full containment and protections uh, of these protective uh, suits are. And my Yeti suit was and uh, uh, put it on. And, uh, I, you know, I think I was only in it for, I don't know, three or four hours. Yeah. But still, it was interesting times. I hadn't done that in a while. Mm -hmm. And Melissa, would they really dress up like that? They do now. <laughs> they, do, they You should. You should. How yes. That? But now, do ever does all the agencies do that? No, I, I'm sure. Um, and I, you know, uh, even as we went into it, um, it was you know the first transition into the technologies, um, and as we move forward. Um, do all the agencies go to that extreme? Um, they should um, for the fact that uh, we constantly shed DNA, we shed uh, skin cells, um, talking, you know, there's all different types of ways of contaminating a crime scene. And with some of the, and the level that DNA has gotten to now and how sensitive it is, it doesn't take much to, con uh, to uh, uh, contaminate a scene. Uh, so you have to, you know, you need to most certainly protect that scene as, most, as much as possible. Um, we have a question, but now I can't find it about what kind of blood was it? Synthetic blood. You have some down here? It is. You need glasses? No. This is synthetic blood. I, um, you probably can't read it, but it's made. I uh, ordered it from Searchy. That's an eight ounce bottle. I used about. In my experiment up there, I used, or in the control, um, creating, creating that crime scene, I used about three-fourths of a bottle. Um, and um, um, and I still have some left out of the other bottle, and, and I'm going to be doing some other tests comparing it um, in the future. And uh, But like I said, I wanted to get this so that I could um, um, create and show content so that you would have a better understanding of how difficult a job is for CSI. But like I said, it's far easier now. Like uh, whenever we get into, uh, when we get to the next shows and everything as um, I develop, because it takes a long time for the luminol when you're out there photographing and you're collecting that data and, and you're looking at that, it takes 30 seconds for one picture. So you, you know, you got your shutter locked open for 30 seconds of aperture. So it's just sitting there, not moving and just to collect one image. And now you've got to take a hundred pictures. Um, so it takes quite a long time uh, for some of these things. I'm not going to take the hundred pictures, but I will, I will take a few to see so that you'll see what in daylight this looks like and what at uh, night, what luminol makes it uh, uh, act up and uh, create. Um, it's just, like I said, it's absolutely amazing. I, you'll be impressed with it. All right. And Stefa, that scary man in the white suit and the goggles could be trying to steal the Google machine. We can't have that. Oh, yeah. Um, I, when I first walked down the hall and went past her office and uh, she looked at me, I said, uh oh. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but then when I went into the woods, I was more fearful going up into the woods in case there was somebody getting ready for pre-season for deer season and sees a white Yeti um, in the woodland. That would be creepy. Yeah. All right. And Mississippi Granny, you pour so much into your research. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. And I hope your channel is doing great and, um, and continue to grow and continue doing what you do so well. We absolutely appreciate everything you do, Mississippi Granny. Y'all check her out. If you haven't checked her out yet, check out this. She goes out there. She creates some great content and looks for all these missing persons. Um, much respect. All right, let's see here. 
Where the heck is SP74? Love the forensics lesson. Well, like I said, it's just something I wanted people to understand that this may be the reason that someone has come forward with that tip. Either Keegan or someone else comes forth with a tip about something that would have been identified at that crime scene and uh, that would create such a frenzy to make sure that we tried to locate it. And, um, and why, you know, so that most certainly could be that they're supporting evidence at both locations. Don't know, but let's hope. And Mississippi Granny thinks you should have your own TV show. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Nope, no this no, is no. as good as it gets. Yeah. No. Yeah, this is it. This is it. All right. And Molly, at Steve, are hunting knives like what you would use to uh, take the skin off an animal, have a guard on the handle before the blade to reduce the person cutting themselves? Some knives do. Some buck knives. Some folding knives don't. And um, most certainly I've cut myself uh, numerous mm. times over the years. Um, there's blood trails of mine everywhere. Um, um, I'd come in and like I said, there'd be a sustained blood trail that I didn't even know about. Um, and um, she would say, um, what's going on? <laughs> and um, as she cleaned up the mess. Yeah. Threw away the clothes. Threw away the clothes. All right. And Jordan. At Steve, these passive stains could indicate a direction of travel away from the scene by the offender as well, correct? More of the passive blood is either where a, a, some type of sustained uh, blood flow is, such as uh, if, you're, if you had an injury and you was lay, uh, leaned up against a tree or something and the passive, as, the, as your heart pumped and the blood flowed, it would come in contact and then just flow naturally. And also passive if you look it up, you'll see that it's also uh, considered where it may pool at. Uh, most of the uh, uh, cast off or directional uh, droplets, there's certain things that happen to that blood drop as it falls through the air and when it hits the surface and the spines will give you indications of direction. Um, and the more speed and the more force applied to a droplet, the smaller it can be and the different types of things. And we'll be covering that actually some more um, in the next um, uh, uh, this week um, but um, tonight I just wanted to do the uh, crime scene stuff but absolutely we'll be getting more into some of those details because they're most certainly that from what the FBI said in their affidavit for that uh, Logan search warrant that they felt that the offender most certainly would have gotten blood on him and that so we know that whatever weapon was used, whatever injuries occurred, whatever the scene looked like, because uh, there are certain things that happened to me that I uh, that when I was processing with aluminol that I found and I was hoping to find them and I didn't mean to create them. And I actually tried not to create and try to protect myself, whereas certain things wouldn't occur. And even with me knowing what to do and how to avoid, it still occurred, which is good for law enforcement, bad for offenders. But uh, we'll get into that. But like I said, I try to uh, do certain things, whereas if I was the offender, thank you for Super Stick. Uh, means a lot to us. And uh, we absolutely, yeah, that means a lot to us. And we will absolutely put that to good use. And, um, um, and, um, do as much as we can to uh, uh, when we go out on the road and everything. Uh, we look forward to uh, meeting some of our families and helping them. And it's people that um, uh, has helped us create this channel that we can do this. And we thank everybody that supports us. But, uh, but like I said, uh, putting myself in the place of the offender and trying to not be contaminated with certain things and certain tests. And I'll go in as we go forward, I'll explain some of the cast off and some of the high impact spatter that I created and walking through a scene where there would be blood uh, uh, existing. It's hard not to become contaminated as a vendor. Entering that scene, staying in that scene, movement through that scene creates transfer no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I know how to travel through a scene and I try to limit certain things. And when I checked, 
I saw that I didn't want to eliminate it. So I was, uh, I was, like I said, uh, that just shows you how easy it is that even when an offender thinks that it's a absolutely perfect scene, it's not. Okay, you got a lot of questions. Okay. okay. All right, and four at Steve. In your opinion or expertise, is there a such thing as fresh DNA versus something that may have been there a while? There's always going to be mixtures of DNA. Um, and it, it, you know, you're going to have old DNA. You may have old animal hairs and differentiate between the two, whatever the lab work does on that. That'd be those experts to be able to tell you that certain things and how that works. I don't know. Um, I, I have no idea that how they would tell how fresh DNA is. All right. And double rainbows. Um, I am interested how rapidly the bark absorbs the spatter. I am too. Um, because, like I said, I, I know it's been up there and uh, I've got some more uh, luminol. I've already ordered some more um, so that uh, once I did this, create this scene, I wanted to make sure I could go back multiple times over the next few months and see if it does degrade. And E, Nick, does luminol destroy DNA? Certain types of, uh, of the chemicals may, but not the kind that uh, are, is used for crime scenes. If you get a certain type, it will not alter the DNA. Okay. And and. So, Mr. Steve, are you saying that Indiana CSI probably gathered a huge amount of blood evidence from the crime scene, especially from the leaves and other ground cover? I absolutely hope so. Yes. I hope that they, I hope that they found stuff like this. This is a leaf that, let's see, I can't figure out how to use these cameras, but uh, but that's a stain. That's one of the ones I picked up from the ground, and they would have done the same thing. If they, if they found uh, certain leaves as, as certain areas, they would have collected them. And I hope they did. All right. And let's see here. How does luminol light up synthetic blood? I looked on the, uh, uh, that as they created this, and there were several different uh, studies done and different uh, um, creators that went out and created this. Um, and they mixed the stuff to get the viscosity right. So the dynamics acted similar to blood. It was quite impressive when I was looking at how they created it and got it. And I have to give them credit that I was well pleased with the product from this company. Now, how many other synthetic bloods are out there? I'm sure there's a lot of them, but. The one I got, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. All right. And Jordan, blood can be very tricky to spot. People think it's bright red, but the more in one place there is darker it is and it dries the color changes. Lots of similar colors in the woods. And most certainly as I do some of the close up up there, you'll see it's absolutely amazing. And it was hard for me to find this. And Dark Arts, are you in Phoenix? Nope, we're not in Phoenix. We're in you Georgia. Be safe. We're in Georgia. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Keep your storm that way. Yeah, we don't need. Not the But we'll y'all stay safe in Phoenix if there's a bad storm out there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here in Jordan. Uh, this would be very difficult in the forest in Delphi. Uh, yes, it's here. Even here, like I said, um, and. Uh, but I'm looking forward to going out there at some point and looking at that. Hopefully, I'll be out there in about three weeks. <laughs> mm -hmm. All righty. And SB74 at Steve, how do you find and lift a latent print from skin? Back in, even when it first came up, it's very difficult because skin has certain characteristics. So it's extremely hard, but there's been everything from many different ways of different chemicals, even from super glue um, and uh, uh, being uh, uh, introduced into an environment around that has certain uh, um, um, uh, that will create a certain type of print, uh, even on skin. It has been done, but it's very, very limited and very, very hard 
to just get a random print off of skin, but it has been done. It's not easy. It's not, it's not a high percentage uh, recovery. And USA, very possible a pommel was used as a blunt weapon. Yeah, he's talking about the back end of the knife inside your hand. Oh. Yeah. If you struck down on something, it most certainly could cause an injury. Yeah. All right. Uh, what all can you get off of a blood stain? You can tell. Uh, there's a lot you can tell from. You can tell which way the, uh, a person is traveling, uh, if they're the source of the blood. Uh, you can tell where they're positioned inside the room. If you have cast off, you can tell how far they're away from a wall because certain size of blood droplets can only travel a certain distance. And um, and the smaller they are, the shorter distance they can care, travel. So there's a lot of things you can tell from blood. All right. And Sean, Steve, would the CSI team go back out at night and check the crime scene with Luminol? Uh, I, I would. Uh, I don't know what they did, but I know they were there, uh, I think, at night. And I think someone said that it was lit up like a football field. I don't know if that was all night long or if that was because all you have to do is turn lights on and off. And you would create certain things, get equipment set up, turn off those lights because Luminol has a limited time frame of usage. And Charlie, you're welcome. This case has me so frustrated. So this type of content that is actually educational instead of speculation is refreshing. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I want it to be. I, I want everyone to understand that, you know, not just, it's just difficult that even CSI being as well trained as some of these teams are, is still a difficult task. Mm hmm all right. And, and Mr. Steve, assuming a knife might be linked to the crime scene by transfer marks, etc., how would LE make the link to a specific perp after it's been sitting in the river for several years? Co-offenders. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Oh. It'd be co-offenders, one of them. Um, also, if he'd ever bought one or if he was known or had a photograph of him holding a, sim a similar type of uh, knife, um, and proximities to residences and things and locations. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eileen, Steve, thank you for your experiment. Looking forward to this series. It's a pleasure. I, I, like I said, I, I wanted to do this so that we could um, get some of the speculation about, you know, that you watch CSI, it, it looks easy. You know, mm -hmm. they got a 43 minute show. It's, it's done in 43 minutes. No, not not in the real world. All right, and support with staff. I vote that Steve sets up a Patreon so we can have special chats with him and bring in revenue for his trips to families. Just a thought. Guess I need help on that one, Staffa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we are so new to this world of. Uh, uh, we, we we. we yeah, we're, we're like babies. Uh, we just don't have any idea about some of this stuff. Yeah. Sweet Caroline. Steve, love all your knowledge. Thank you so much. Mrs. Steve, thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. Um, and Jordan at Steve, I've heard that radio traffic. It did happen. Okay. And uh, like I said, we, um, um, I've heard it, but like I said, I don't know exactly what time of day it was and what communications because radio traffic, um, like I said, um, uh, it's possible that some of the rescuers did find them at a certain time and there was just a delay before they released it. I don't know, but uh, law enforcement would know and be able to uh, correlate those and make sure everything's up and up. Mm -hmm. In dark arts, I need to thank you again for helping me today. Best <laughs> program for balanced, unbiased assessment. Thank you so thank much. You. And she's been bragging on you all day. I don't know what I would do. Let's see here. Um, and Charlie, um, is it fair to say that there is no guarantee that the perp may not have had a lot of notice of blood on him while walking out? People say he would have been noticed because of the large amount of blood. Spoiler alert. That's what this is. Um, good observation. <laughs> um, 
we'll be covering that. They've been that. waiting on that one. Yeah, I've been waiting on that. Good observation. That's coming up in uh, our next show Thursday. So um, <laughs> you'll get to see from what my experiments were, how much blood was transferred back onto the Yeti suit. All right. And donation came in. I've been instructed to, to go find it. But the Yeti suit, that's how come I wore the white one, so that you would be able to see exactly uh, how it would be. Thank you, Jennifer Rochelle. Super sticker. Thank you so much. Right now, I got to go back to 835. I'm doing better with my numbers. This is Steve getting this Google machine. I'm trying account. to get this thing figured out. All right, here we go. And this one is going to be from. You know, a lot can happen in a minute. <laughs> From why? What could be in someone's mind to actually murder two little girls? So sad. Absolutely evil. I mean, it is. Um, you know, they're not. Uh, I absolutely have no use for any type of psychopath or animal of that nature. And I've met my share of them um, and um, uh, have absolutely no use for them. And four at Steve, Mrs. Steve, how can I change donations? You know, I have no idea. And people have asked that before. I, uh, I need to see if I can look in that. Yeah, there's an answer out there somewhere. Because I do see some people that are, are able to make certain weird number of, of donations on some of these other channels. I, like I said, we don't have any idea. Um, yeah, I'm just lucky to be here. All right, let's see here. And Melly at Steve, would they have a light to detect blood? There's other alter, alter, alternate light sources out there that detect a lot of body fluids, but not so much for the blood. The luminol and some of the chemical reactions, and there's some new stuff out there, but um, really not the light per, uh, so much. Uh, and um, But um, it does, blood most certainly does have react, reactions with certain chemicals. All right, and let's see here. Whoops, <laughs> that worked out well. Let's see here. <clears throat> oh, Dark Arts got an awesome coffee cup and water bottle. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody else sent you an email today. Oh, yes. The spider and plus four. That's, uh, I love the spider. That was that. so cool. Um, but uh, spider uh, what was oh, it? 004. 004 or something yeah. like that. Uh -huh. That was so cute. Uh, Corgi Mama, thank you for the involved recreations to help us understand. Tell being married to you, I just have to picture some of these unique experiences. You do. Oh, yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah, I surprise her quite often. Yeah. <laughs> she just well, stares at me and shakes her head. Uh -uh, that's all I can do. Um, and Molly at Steve, put a bright orange vest over that Yeti suit if hunting season has started. <laughs> yeah. Ditto. Well, well, it hasn't started yet, but uh, it did enter me that regardless if it started or not, what would they think about a Yeti in the woods? Isn't that the truth? That would be scary. I find it quite humorous. All right. And double rainbows. Does that suit help prevent cutting yourself, Mr. Steve? Not at all. Nope. I didn't cut myself on this. So the last two control tests I did, I've, uh, uh, I've escaped all harm so far. So far. So far. All right. So I'm getting, hold on. I'm getting word to go. Check on something. Well, we've already done that one. Okay. All right. So back right here to 843. And Jolly Scrapper, would there still be DNA at the crime scene or has too much time passed? That's part of what my test is about. Uh, I'd be interested in that. Um, because 
I really don't know. I don't know what protective services or surfaces are there, what type of uh, uh, um, foliage, what type of tree trunks, what type of hidden areas that may have been sheltered. I uh, don't know, but I do find it extremely interesting and uh, because I know in, in controlled environments, it can last a long time. I uh, don't know so much about the outside, but uh, I am interested in that. Yeah. Body Farm in Tennessee may have a lot of that information. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. I'm going to look that up. I think Stepha wants to go there. <laughs> Alive, hopefully. Hopefully. She didn't say that, but I would I would think so. All right, let's see here. Um, and Molly at Steve, how do they keep the Yeti soup being sterile and the least thing to contaminate? It's a one-time thing. Um, they, you take it out of a sealed package, you know, you put it on in the last moment, enter into the scene, and it's just single use. And Jennifer Rochelle, I cannot wait for the day I hear there has been an arrest. Praise God. I know it's coming. I hope, absolutely agree you 100%. That's the day we're going to party. All right, let's see here. And Ann, this is about Delphi. Perp. Perps apparently got away from the crime scene undetected and had plenty of time to discard clothing, weapons, clean vehicle, etc. It appears to be that case uh, for the fact that we're five, almost five and a half uh, years later, no offender in jail. Yep. All right. Let's see here. And dark arts. Wait, was there blood at Delphi? I know it. I don't know from if there was from the offender or not. Um, I, I think because we don't know what type of um, limited DNA that they're talking about. And, and, you know, when they talk about quantity and um, we just don't know. From the offender, we know from victims, yes, but no. Or we assume from the fact that the uh, in the FBI affidavit, they said that the uh, offender would have um, um, had a, um, some um, evidence of a, a DNA on him. And Ann, I just think, and I hope I'm wrong, that L.E. and the prosecutor prosecutors just can't make an adequate link to a prime suspect in the Delphi case. And I hope that, yeah, I hope that they can, um, and I hope that day is near. Yeah, no kidding. And four, I believe Ellie knows who the killer killers are. I'm, man, sure. me and you are, are on about the same page on that. I, I'm, I'm, in the last few weeks, I, before then, I wasn't convinced of it, but I'm getting more and more convinced of it every day. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's see here. And James, why not release cause of death? Cause of death doesn't affect the prosecution, and it might help the public to help the police. Uh, I don't know. Uh, sometimes I do uh, uh, release manner of death. Sometimes they don't. Um, but they've chosen to go this uh, strategy, and they've stuck with their guns. And um, hopefully it doesn't come back to harm the case. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, never silent. My stepdad found a knife in Lake Takes Homa after 40 years and he still found evidence in the handle where the blade was attached. Throwing it in a river doesn't always get rid of things. Oh, yeah, there could be certain um, uh, fibers, hair, uh, all other different types of things that might be caught up in some of those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, Double rainbows. How long is the life of the luminol, please? Um, I know that the the mixture I said, that I use said on the uh, uh, instruction, make it seem due to its limited life uh, expectancy once mixed. Um, and so um, with this luminol, it's now, that's what it was in the old days when we, we first started using it. And uh, the kind that I ordered, I'm sure there's different brands that may have different usage timeframes, um, but I've never, we've always only 
made enough to get through one scene and never, you know, seen how long it was. I do have a bottle that I made that I'm going to test and see how long it works of this new stuff of this new age. And um, I'm keeping some logs on it so I can understand it better also. All right. And Tracy, does luminol destroy the DNA evidence? Some D, some luminols of certain brands are will harm DNA. Um, some will not. The, the kind I have uh, will not. It's far more expensive, but it won't harm the DNA. All right. And Stephen. Hello, Steve. I just subscribed to your channel. Welcome. And I learned a lot from you. May I ask how long would it take if someone hit you to show a bruise on your body from your experience? Thank you. It, sometimes it's almost instantaneous. It depends on what type of photography and there's certain photography uh, lightings and filters, whereas you can see sub bruising before you get to see what happens in a day or two. So there's certain types. And then also even afterwards when a bruise is uh, leaving. So um, it just depends a lot about lightings and filters and certain things and how you would process an individual. Because there's busted uh, uh, cal uh, uh, what's the proper word on it? But sub uh, uh, hematorm I can't pronounce it. Was what? Hem yeah, there's a hemoglobin? No, it, no, no, there's terms for it. Uh, I have a, st a stammer and a stutter, so sometimes I can't get the proper words out. But um, there are certain things that happen with the blood vessels under the skin and the muscles and all those areas that cause that blood Hemoma. blood blood um, discoloration in those areas whenever they're ruptured. Uh, there's some good big words for it. I can't. They don't come to mind right now. But there's a hematoma. It, that may be it. She she may have it. hematoma. Maybe. maybe I don't know. Ask your daughter. Yeah. All right. And Black Rose at Steve, do you feel they have new information sending them into the water looking for a specific object? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Nikki says it is a subdermal hematoma. That was it. I was trying to. That's it. Um, I just got the hematoma. Right? I couldn't pronounce it. I'm sorry, guys. All right. Here we go. Let's see here. As something as an animal beast, I've been fighting since I was um, a kid. Uh, able to talk. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, checking convictions at Tree Crime Web. I am amazed at your lives. They are so full of information. Bravo to you and the biggest thank you from this whole community. Oh, that's sweet. <coughs> thank you. Checking convictions. Also check her out. They, uh, she's another creator out there. Has some great channels and gets a lot of missing people's names out there. And Anne, Mr. Steve, true about code <coughs> offenders, which is why I think it's so critical to find the evidence in the Wabash based on a specific snitch of KK that builds KK credibility for arrest warrant affidavit. I'm hoping that's the case. I'm absolutely hoping all this is linked and uh, that that animal that, who is also what he has committed against these other innocent children. Um, and um, uh, hopefully we can bring him to justice for a lot of different things. Uh, Stefa asked about TCW merch and yes, we do. And the link is in the about us on the YouTube channel. I don't have the, the link to post. I need to get all those. I need to do all that. Yeah. I'll get all the links and send those out. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Thank Tracy you for that. posted it. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. All right. Let's see here. Um, <laughs> and never silent. You will be on the next Bigfoot Adventure episode. He would love to go chase yetis. <laughs> oh man! If there, if there, if such an animal ever existed, me and it would absolutely run into each other. I have no doubt if if such a thing ever happened. But mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> just, that's my luck. That if any such a thing could ever happen to anybody, it would be me. There you go. And Don Spain escaped polar bear in <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> yeah. That that is it. Absolutely. All right, let's see here. 
Diana, how probable is it that he knows direction left crime scene by reading that scene? There's a good prob you know, possibility that they may have. I mean, you know, it, it just depends on what the search parties did. Depends on what those officers did when they got there, locking down those perimeters and moving everybody out and creating that avenue of going to and from the crime scene. How successful were they on that? dictates everything else. All right. And Anne, a sharpened hunting knife blade is incredibly dangerous, can slice a thin sheet of paper in a second. I have one and I'm afraid of it. Keep it sheathed. Absolutely. Like I said, I've cut myself all, all the time. <laughs> Steph, I was planning on going on a field trip to the body farm <laughs> alive, but it is negotiable. <laughs> and James, a paper suit? No, it's a, um, um, it's whatever the, um, it's, it's a very tough fabric, uh, tear resistant. Um, and, um, but, and also um, uh, keeps the uh, transfer of fluids away from you as much as possible because you are in a hostile uh, environment where there's a lot of things in there that can uh, be transferred, especially on some of the bodies and some of the scenes that's been there for a while. And four, yes, Spider 004. I do wonder who Spy C 007 is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. And SP-74, I think it's taking so long because of the very complicated CSAM connection. It's possible. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see here. All right. 912, you want to do some more? Yeah, we did some more. more. Yeah. Okay. And Will, hematoma. See there? There you go. Um, and Ann, Mr. Steve, have you ever had a defense attorney question the photographs of a luminald area as trial evidence? No, not for me. No. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it, it, it would be one that they would on the, um, in certain uh, cases, but I've never had to experience it. In Teresita, thanks for stopping in, just listening and learning. All right, let's see here. Um, uh oh, Will is still sick. Hope you get better. I'm working. I've got half of the puppy's slide to put in, but I got to get the big dog to stick her picture in there, and then I'll have it ready. I promise. Um, and Will wants to know how far away was this water search from the crime scene? Um, about 36 miles. Hmm. Okay. All right. And um, all right. So it's Steve needs to go at 915. So it's 914. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you, thank you to the volunteers for Cyclops. We are making progress. Added two more this week. Um, already, I'm waiting for one, two, three more states to come on. Um, we are going to get these states out there. I promise. Working as hard as we can. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And to the mods, you're the best. Right. And I appreciate anyone's uh, comments we hadn't uh, got to tonight. Just put them in at the bottom of the uh, replay one or wait until we come out uh, on uh, Thursday. We have another show. But there's other creators out there that have some great content. And I don't want to take up all their time. And um, I want everyone to go out there because there's so many different things for other creators to have an impact. And we, we want everyone's perspective to be heard. And uh, But you guys stay safe out there. Appreciate all of you that have contributed tonight in so many different ways and uh, just share this uh, information and uh, let's try to have an impact that's positive. Call in those tips, let law enforcement know what you know and uh, so that we can bring justice to Libya and Abby and we'll see y'all soon. Good night. Thank y'all.